What's up nieces and nephews? Welcome back to the channel. If you've been around a while, you'll know that we have been looking to get some smaller bikes to have a little fun on here locally. We love our big motorcycles, my big road king and her big fat bob, but there's something fun about taking something little and just whipping it around. Well, today we have an opportunity to do just that. Welcome to the M1 PS. This thing, look at the size of this box. This thing arrived to us on a pallet the other day. It's a 260 pound box and inside of it is a 187 pound motorcycle. That's right, motorcycle. Let's get this thing open, put together and get out there and raise some hell, baby. I have been looking forward to trying this thing out now for several weeks and I am excited, baby. Cut one, cut two, and it's all in cut. I think one of my favorite things about this is that it comes mostly assembled already. Check this out. This thing comes with a certificate of origination or an MSO that's exactly like a title. So this thing is actually street legal. That's gonna be fun. We're gonna take this up to bike night. Now, what I didn't tell you is that this thing is an electric scooter. Now, you know, you know your old uncle loves a good internal combustion engine, but that doesn't mean I don't appreciate the power that lies within an electric motor. I have never in my life owned an electric vehicle, so this is a totally foreign concept to me. You know those memes that say the European mind cannot comprehend? This is one of those, the Southern mind, just don't understand, but we're gonna figure it out. Charging cable. I don't know what this is, we're gonna figure it out. Box of stuff. What is in here actually? Oh, hell yeah. Hey, it wouldn't be street legal if we didn't have mirrors, right? These are mirrors. We're gonna put these off to the side to keep them safe. Box number two. I'm kind of pushing this stuff off to the side because I'm really excited about what's under here and you're about to see styrofoam, styrofoam. Another box that we'll figure out in just a little bit. Now we're getting to the good stuff. This is what your old uncle has been waiting for, baby. Do you see what I see? Is that a big old leather seat? I feel like it would only be fitting for the first ride on this thing to be down like the local biker bar. You know what I'm saying? I guarantee you this thing is gonna turn some heads. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, brother. All right, let's see what we can do here. It's like a kid opening a Christmas present, man. I can't be too gentle with it, not when I'm this pumped up. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. All right, I think we gotta be a little bit smarter than uh, the box. So let's get an appropriate tool and cut this cardboard up the right way. But chow. The cardboard may be stronger, but it is no match. There are staples on this end, and technically I could uh, remove the staples, but I don't wanna lose those in here because uh, your old uncle doesn't wear shoes a lot of times. And there's a very good chance that I would uh, stab myself. All right, uh, we're just gonna take a moment here in the box. Look at this thing, man. This thing is badass, and I can't wait uh, to get this thing put together. Now, this thing is heavier than I thought it would be. Uh, even though I had plenty of access to information online, I guess I didn't quite fathom in my dumb old head how heavy it was. So uh, we may need to wait till Bo Mama gets home to finish putting that front wheel and stuff on. But for the meantime, let's see how far we can get. So she comes with the handlebars off, probably so that way they can fit it inside of this box. So we're gonna see what we need. Maybe some of the tools and the parts that we need are gonna be inside of the uh, boxes that we just threw to the side. Speaking of boxes, let's take a look and see what's in there. So that way I kinda have my head wrapped around what's going on in there. There we go. The fit and finish, man, I gotta say, look at these key fobs. Look at these key fobs. That is professional looking key fobs. Here's your foot pegs. Yeah, those are solid, hell yeah. And then these, these guys, I already know what this is. We're gonna pull it out. These are gonna be like uh, forward controls. We're actually gonna put those on because I've looked at the riding positions. There's your speedometer, there's your top riser clamp, and they even include a phone holder. That's amazing. Let's take a look at the second box. And this guy, what do we have? Not the Easter candy that you were all hoping for. What do we have, what do we have, what do we have? Look at this thing, here's your charger. So you plug this bad boy in to the wall, and then that orange cable that we looked at earlier, that's gonna go to the bike. So we're gonna keep this here for now and we're gonna start putting this thing together. All right, first thing I'm gonna want to do here, I'm not gonna dig this little knife too far in here because these brakes are hydraulic brakes. 
and they do come with your uh, brake fluid already in them. Last thing I want to do is puncture one of those. I advise you to do the same. Reason why I'm putting these on first is uh, I don't want them flopping around any more than they have to be now that the um, box is undone. And I think this is going to give us a lot more leverage as we um, try to muscle this thing around to finish the assembly. And I already know that I'm going to have to go get that uh, riser clamp, stick it on there. And we're not going to tighten it all the way down because I'm going to figure out the best riding position for me. Let's come over here and get it done. Look at that. It's even like branded. That's cool. It's, it's little things. It's little things like that that really make a difference. You know what I mean? So unsurprisingly, this uh, the bolts on top for this uh, riser clamp are going to be metric. So uh, six millimeter. Now, on these things, because it's a clamp to keep things still, definitely don't tighten them all the way in until you've got them all in. That way you have room, a little wiggle room, you know what I'm saying? Your old uncle needs a little wiggle room, especially in my belt after a good barbecue dinner. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, actually I am gonna tighten it down. Uh, and then if we need to adjust it later, it ain't hard to just break these four things loose. I'm trying to go at a diagonal pattern, not tightening one side all the way down before getting to the other one. That way both sides of the riser clamp has, you know, the room to get itself all the way down there. You know what I mean? We had to stop right there for just a moment. You guys know I'm a very patient, impatient, impatient man. I didn't have to go get my own tools. You know why I didn't have to go outside and get my own tools? Because Mangosteen is both uh, wise enough and good enough to send you a whole bag full of them. I've got everything I need. This actually looks like a pretty well-crafted wrench. It's a 19 millimeter, 17 millimeter combo wrench. Another 17 and 19 millimeter, hell yeah. 12 and 14. Those are like good wrenches. They're not like plastic bullshit. A nice screwdriver, looks like a Japanese industrial standard screwdriver, dude. Hell yeah, man. We got everything we need in here. In other words, there's a lot of good stuff in here. Another bolt for something. I will figure that out. And this guy, I got too much stuff in my hands. This guy is product overview, notes for safe riding. It's got how your gauges work. I mean, most people that ride motorcycles or scooters already know how gauges work, but it doesn't mean that some people don't know, right? Some people don't know. So it's good to have these kind of things in here. Yeah, look at that. It tells you how the charging port works. Not an instruction manual on how to put it together. Not an instruction manual, but uh, they do have that available online. And I'll link it in the description. Um, uh, they have a whole video on how to, exactly how to put this thing together. Did I watch it? Of course I did. Of course I did. All right, back to the project at hand. We still want to get this, uh, this wheel out of here, right? Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right, turn the wheel a little bit. Oh, the handlebars, there we go. Now we got the wheel out. Sometimes, like I said, you just got to be smarter than what we're looking with. Okay, now for safety purposes, what I'm gonna recommend here, so this is obviously not included in the box. I'm gonna recommend you either get a really, really strong friend with a lot of stamina, or do like I'm doing. I've got this motorcycle jack. We're gonna lift this over. I've got it at an angle because I'm gonna have it at an angle when I bring it over here. I'm gonna use this motorcycle jack to pull this thing up. There we go, baby. Both sides of this axle have a washer and nut. So this washer, has, um, it's carved out. So this nut fits inside of here. Brilliant. All right, so uh, this motorcycle jack is great, but a, uh, a friend would also be helpful, but you can do it on your own. Just, it would be nice to have somebody else here to help, you know what I'm saying? Bring out the big guns. Hell yeah. All right, all we wanna do on this side is make sure when it starts coming out that I got the other spacer. All right, we wanna make sure this thing is, uh, about as even as we can get it on both sides. I don't want one axle looking all out of shape compared to the other one or one side of the axle, you know what I'm saying? Okay, here's another thing where uh, a second hand, third, a third hand would be nice to keep that thing a little bit steady up there. Hell yeah, she looks good so far. All right, on to the next step. This scooter comes with three sizes of uh, Allens, so they, they include all three sizes of Allen wrenches. Okay, the fender has uh, two, bolt holes on the front on each side and one bolt hole on the rear on each side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the uh, rear ones on uh, kind of loosely at first, so we can use those as pivot points to line up the front ones, you know what I'm saying? All right, tighten them down. 
we're getting there. We'll go over tight on the other side. And since they're not really connected, I don't have to worry about any sort of uh, torque pattern. You know what I'm saying? There we go. That ain't going nowhere, boys. Okay, next up from our bag of goodies, we're gonna put these controls on. Now, what I will say is that you can, you can put these pegs on right here. If you want, uh, if you're a shorter rider, maybe this is more comfortable, or if you just like make controls. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them on like this to have them a little bit more up and forward. Uh, I think that's a more comfortable riding position for me. May not be for everybody else. Totally up to you. So this is gonna be your original holes, right? I can't wait for somebody to say, nice bike, man, on this thing, you know what I mean? I don't wanna be like, hell yeah, brother. You wanna make sure, okay, so you've got, you got these right, and you could technically put it on like this. Make sure this is on where it folds backwards. And the reason why you want that, if you do hit the curb, you want it to give. You want it to fold backwards, not forward. You end up throwing yourself off the bike if you do that. We're almost done, guys. We're gonna uh, charge this thing up afterward. I'll show you some highlights of the, of the scooter. Hell yes, this is so awesome. All right, last but not least on this little uh, assembly trip, you got, it had two little, uh, two little Allen bolts on the back. And that's what's got your speedometer on there. This is the smaller of the three Allen wrenches. What I like about the Allen wrenches that they included is you've got one side that's got, it's squared off like a traditional Allen wrench. The other side has the, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's like uh, the, the beveled end. So you can go at a little bit of an angle if you need to, you know? Excellent. And then how does this work, you say? Well, says I, this is gonna plug into here, right? It can only go one way, which is very nice. So it's impossible for you to really put it in there wrong. I mean, you have to really make an effort to do that anyway. So you can only put this on the skinny part of the bar. Um, maybe you can stretch it out and get it on the fatter side, but I don't wanna do that. We're gonna get this to about right here. And the reason I'm doing it right here is because I need a place to, I need to make sure I can get my screwdriver in there. Not the angle that I want it necessarily, but that's gonna do it. Look at that. And then this guy plugs in here. Again, it can only go one way, so you really can't mess it up without effort. Like you have to try to mess it up. All right, last pieces before we uh, start putting this thing, getting this thing squared away. So you're gonna screw this all the way up, right? This is gonna act like your stop. So then we're gonna get this in as tight as it'll go. And I'm gonna put both mirrors on because I have a thing for as much symmetry as possible. Check your state laws. In Florida, you only have to have one. As long as you have one rear view mirror, you're fine. But uh, I like the symmetry of two, so uh, that's what we're going with. All right, so I've got this lined up with the handlebar. I don't have anything to hold on to, so it's gonna be the 14. And they thought of everything. I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that in just a second. We're gonna get that set screw, or set nut, tighten down on there. Oh, Mike. And this boot, see? I mean, just little little pieces, little things like that, like really make a difference. Because I could've just left that just like that and nobody would've ever really noticed. And nobody's gonna notice this either. But that is a, it's a nice touch. Last one, baby, and then we'll see you when I got the finished product together. Okay, there's only two things left to do before we get ready to take this puppy out and ride. It did come with a completely depleted battery. I dig that, man, I love it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug it in. There's the battery charger, converter, whatever that piece is, I've already got it plugged in. You see it's got a green flashing light, uh, which typically means it's not doing anything because, hey, we still got this thing to plug in. So let's do that real quick. I like that this is two parts. So we're gonna take this guy it can only go one way. We're gonna plug it in here. And now this one, I don't know if this is proprietary or not because I've never had an electric vehicle. You got a square part up top, it goes right there. Boom, she's locked in. All right, nieces and nephews, your old uncle skipped a step, but we figured it out. And now we know what's under the magic box. So the battery itself is underneath this cover that we talked about earlier. We didn't know what was on there. Uh, so it, well, the way it comes, this is not plugged in, it needs to be plugged in. And this switch is set to off. We just set it to on, okay? Beautiful, I love when a plan comes together. So the way this comes on and off is you got these little guide, guide hooks, right? And just make sure they're all lined up in there and just kind of push it forward. To get it off, do the key sideways, knock it backwards, it comes right out. So now with that said, 4.37 p.m. 
Easter, Eastern time. You can hear the battery charger kicking in. This is beautiful, I love it. You remember it was on uh, flashing green. You can hear it going now, she's on red, 4.37 p.m. All right, like I said, this thing came completely dead, probably for the safer. We're gonna let this thing finish charging, see how long it takes to get charged, and then we'll see you back here later. All right, fam, uh, the time is now 6.30 p.m. And sometime in the last 20 minutes, the uh, motorcycle has completed its charging cycle. So we are less than two hours, no, less than three hours. So about two and a half hours from completely depleted to fully charged, baby. We're not gonna turn it on yet. We're gonna do all that in the morning. I would love to ride it this evening, but uh, ah, we're gonna do it tomorrow. I'm excited for you guys to see this thing. So we are going to do a second video where we're gonna put this thing through some tests to see really what all it'll do. I can't really take it out too far publicly because I don't have it registered yet, but I cannot resist the urge to ride this thing. I mean, look at it, for an electric scooter, the classic bobber style, look at that. Dual shock suspension in the rear, two piston disc brakes on front and back. It just looks sharp, man, absolutely sharp. It's got this key fob on it where I can lock it. Yeah, see, I can set the alarm, I think. Let's see. Yeah, see, okay, unlock it. What does this thing do? Look, it starts without me having to put the key in. That is so cool. <laughs> Oh man, that's great. Let's see if it'll go without it. So the headlights have a couple uh, interesting things. You've got this off, halo, and fully on button. I don't know how well you can see this display, but it's got three gears. We're gonna start in the lowest one. There it goes. Okay, kickstand cannot be down. Oh. <laughs> uh, she's pretty quiet. I mean, it's electric, so what do you expect? Oh man, it's so weird, like not having the motor, the rumble and roar beneath my legs. The suspension feels great. I need to adjust my mirrors. Okay, hey, which one is this front or back? Okay, let's put it in gear. There's two. Oh yeah, baby. It's definitely a lot faster. Oh man. <laughs> oh, this is great. There's a little guy in our neighborhood that rides a little uh, Honda monkey like down to go get his mail from the mailbox. I feel like this could be my mail getter. Brakes work very, very well. Like I said, this is uh, we're going to do a, a second video of this thing. I just wanted you guys to see a little bit what it looked like. I don't know what top speed. That's one of the things that we're going to do on the second video is we're going to look at top speeds. You know what? Let's um. Cause we've done first gear and second gear. Uh, I'm reaching. I'm. Uh, I'm reaching for a, a pedal break, and there's not one. Okay, we're gonna put it in third. This is uh, supposedly gonna be the uh, the Mama Gemma. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, she's got some torque, baby. Holy smokes, man! So this is definitely the one if you're gonna go on a public road. Holy cow! Okay, calm down, Mike, calm down. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Oh, this is great. Uh, I am reminded though that I need to uh, need to tighten up my handlebars. Remember yesterday I didn't tighten the riser clamp all the way down? Well, I need to do that. And she's got some, I mean, keep your expectations real, but it's got some serious torque, man, for a little thing this size. 
Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Does the horn work? Sure does. I love this thing, man. Uh, we're almost at 40 miles an hour. It's definitely speeding through my neighborhood. <laughs> this is so cool, man. Let's see if I got uh, indicators. Yep. There's the uh, right turn indicator. Oh, there I go, reaching for the brake pedal again. That's not there. Man. Yeah, this thing's pretty cool. Let's get back to the house. Okay, I put exactly one mile on the odometer. One mile on the odometer. Uh, we're going to do a couple things. I'm going to, uh, I think this is a good, no. Oh, there it is, right there. There it is, right there. I'm going to tighten these down. And uh, I figured out that I actually have this phone holder upside down. So I'm going to flip it try to squeeze it up in here as much as possible so that way it's kind of flush here and then yeah man this thing's pretty cool we'll see you inside all right y'all that's going to wrap this one up this has been a blast like i said i'm going to do a second video this is video one the company was kind enough to hook me up with a discount code if you want to get one of these of your own uh, i'm gonna have a link down in the description and in the pinned comment uh, directly to the scooter that we just talked about here, the M1PS. Uh, or if you just go to the site E-A-H-O-R-A -A, um, and use the code BOGATOR at checkout, you'll get $400 off one of these scooters. And you might look at those and say, well, who who needs that? Well, short answer, everybody after having one of those. But no, really, my wife and I were talking about this last night, and it's like, what a great one-time investment for some people. I mean, if you buy a motorcycle, you get, oil changes, gasoline, I mean, all these things uh, that you have to do with the regular vehicle wear and tear and maintenance, especially if you have a relatively short commute. I mean, um, and especially if you have a relatively short commute with somewhere where you can charge it if you need to during the day. Um, for street legal, one-time cost, it's fantastic. Great option for people. I would have never considered, uh, you know, electric scooter or any EV vehicle EV vehicle, ATM machine, electronic, electric vehicle before getting the scooter. And I got to tell you, man, I think my mind has been opened up a little bit. So yeah, thanks for coming along on this one. Now stay tuned for the next video. I don't know if it's going to be next, but it'll definitely be sometime uh, very soon uh, where we go down. We're going to go do some road tests. I want to see how fast this thing can go. Why not? Uh, I want to see what kind of distance I can get from this thing. Uh, we're going to do some uphill tests on it. I just want to look and see what the capabilities are of the M1PS. I don't have a lot of hills here in Florida, but we're going to do our best to figure it out. So until then, we'll see you later.